Numerical Computation, Chapter 11, Video 2. So last time we observed that the um, n minus 1 square times n minus 1 square system of linear equation can be written in matrix vector form as a times v equals to b, where the v is the unknown vector. So um, the first step here would be to form the unknown vector v, because this becomes a vector, so it has a single index for it, and it should represent um, all the unknown data on a two-dimensional grid point, u, i, j, with double index. So it depends on how you sort them out, how you order them, how in which order you put each of these u, i, j into the v. So the common, commonly used one is um, a process called natural ordering, which we'll take a look now. So we go through two levels of sweeping. First, we throw the x direction and then the y direction as follows. So the v vector, which contains n minus 1 square unknowns, is the following. So you fix j to be 1 and let i go through 1, 2, and all the way to n minus 1. So once through, sweep through x direction, and once you're done, then you let j be 2 and you let i go through 1 to n minus 1. And then you keep increasing j until you finish the last j when it's equal to n minus 1. So let's take an example with a small number of n, let's say capital N equals to 4. Then my total number of unknown will be 3 times 3, which is 9. And the unknown vector shall be formed like this. So v1 is u11, and v2 is u21, v3 is u31, v4 is u12, v5 is u22, v6 will be u32, v7, u13, v8, u23, v9. U33. Probably it is easier to show this um, on a graph. So this is our grid here, and you know the, the unknowns are the 3x3 three three inner points. So your v1 will be the value here, 1, 1, and then you go, to, go through x direction, v1, v2, v3, once it's finished, increase a y, v4, v5, v6, and then finish, increase y, so v7, v8, v9. So we can um, write out the each equation for a given ij going through all the um, grid points containing my unknown by using the computational stencil. You place the stencil over each interior point and then you write out the equation using the corresponding weight at each point. And also, um, if the stencil has one leg touching the boundary point, and then we must take consideration of the boundary conditions because that one is not unknown, that's a given data, and you would move that to the right-hand side. So we have nine equations. The first one, placing the stencil center at v1, we see that it touches um, v2 and v4 as interior points, and it touches the two boundary points, which we have boundary condition 0. So moving them to the right-hand side, it's 0, so all we have is these three unknowns. Then you place the stencil center at v2, and you see it touches v1, v3, and then also a v5 plus another one that's on the boundary with condition 0, so it goes to the right-hand side. And then you place your stencil center at V3, and then you see it touches a V2 and V6, plus two boundary conditions, which are 0, so it doesn't give contribution to the right-hand side. And then be patient and put it over V4, and you see it touches V1, V5, and V7, plus one boundary, which does not give me any contribution. And then put it into V5, which is in the middle. It touches all four interior nodes, V2, V4, V6, and V8. 
okay and then you write this out equal to zero this is a pure zero there's no zero boundary condition being added on top of it and then move it over to v6 and you see you touch v3 v5 and v9 plus a boundary condition which is zero so it goes there so now we um went through um two sweeps in x and then we go to the third layer of uh, y y and j equals to three actually there so we have placing the stencil over v7 in the center we see we touch v4 v8 and we touch one boundary condition which is zero but the last boundary condition on the top which is not zero and that gives me the value g at x1 moving to the right hand side i get negative g at x1 and then you move it to the point at um, v8 and you see you touch v5 v7 and v9 plus a boundary which is has the value g of x2 move to the right hand side you get the negative one okay and the last point is um, v9 with the center and you touch v6 and v8 plus two boundaries one of them is non-zero which is collected here another one is zero which you don't need to add okay we see now we have um nine equations and we have nine unknowns so it might be a good idea of uh, organizing this a little bit into a clearer structural way let's see how we can do that so um here are the same nine equations but i put them out in this way such that um all the v1s are vertically aligned put here and v2s are put here and v3s and v4 v5 v6 v7 v8 v9 okay I just vertically line them up and you see these are the same equation and i put these um, separators because that's one sweep in x and that's another kind of a sweep and then here is one sweep in y and here's a, another sweep the advantages of writing it in this way first you see the structure and second it makes it much easier if you want to put this into a matrix vector form so calling the v v1 v2 v3 as my vector then the coefficient matrix will simply take the coefficients in front of each v as the position that we list here and just form a matrix okay so we'll see so next we will write this out the matrix okay collecting all these coefficients i can write it as a times v equals to b where a would be just all those coefficients so i put them all in and i still keep this um, um kind of a um separating lines and now we see that this a matrix actually has some very clear structure because now we see it's kind of a block structure so it's a three times three block structure and in each block it's again a three times three square matrix and in this matrix we see it's tridiagonal where on the diagonal is negative four and off diagonal they're all ones so excuse me so this shall be just one right and uh, and then this diagonal block has exactly the same structure and this diagonal block has exactly the same structure and then the upper diagonal block is an identity matrix of size three times three and so is this upper diagonal block and the under lower diagonal block is an identity matrix of three by three and so is the this one and then outside these are all zero so zero matrix three times three so this structure is very important later on we'll see it's actually a general structure okay and then you can collect on um, the load vector and put it in this vector b and then you have three 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 zeros and three zeros and these three coming from the last boundary condition okay so as i said we already noticed that this tri-diagonal blocked structure of the a matrix we also notice that this A matrix is um, symmetric and is diagonal dominant.
the element on the diagonal, which is negative 4, is really big in absolute value. It's bigger than or equal to the sum of all the off-diagonal elements. Now, in the general case, where n is another number, say a bit bigger, 6 or 7 or 10 or 100, um, the same block structure is preserved. And if we form the unknown vector using um, natural ordering. So in detail, let now D be an n minus 1 times n minus 1 tridiagonal matrix with the negative 4 on the diagonal and 1 on the sup and sub, so upper and lower diagonal. And uh, let I be a identity matrix of size n minus 1 times n minus 1. Then the A matrix is block tridiagonal n minus 1 times n minus 1 with a block structure as here. So on the diagonal you have D's and upper diagonal identity, lower diagonal identity matrix. Okay, so remember each piece here is on its own an n minus 1 times n minus 1 square matrix. So and then A is n minus 1 times n minus 1 squared matrix with blocks. So you can simply calculate and find out that the A matrix will finally have the size n minus 1 squared times n minus 1 squared. And also we make the um, observation that in the load vector B there, all we have inside it is just all the boundary conditions that goes in there. Okay, so hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.